Good evening and thanks for joining us on your Wednesday. I'm Sophie Erber. The Yankton, South Dakota School Board tonight has voted to reinstate their mask mandates. What this means now for students and the staff in our top story at five. On Tuesday night, the school board voted four to one in favor of bringing back mask mandates. That is for all school districts, for schools within the district with the intent of combating rising case numbers of COVID-19. That vote was made after an hour of testimonies were heard both for and against that mandate. And if there is a mask mandate that goes into place today, I expect all sports to be canceled immediately. Also, when we are talking about a 300% increase in cases, well, when we go from zero to 71 in two weeks, that's a skewed number. Why don't we look at 71 people out of a county population of 22,000? That's less than 1%. That is not a very high number. Students and the staff will be required to wear masks in buildings from 7.30 in the morning until 3.30 in the afternoon. And COVID-19 case numbers have jumped recently as well at the Sioux Center Health and officials there are making some changes to fight the outbreak. The case numbers quadrupled from 11 in July to 44 in August. In response, the hospital has implemented a mask mandate plus they're now offering vaccine clinics three times a week instead of just one. Corey Nelson, CEO of Sioux Center Health, says while various factors contribute to the COVID-19 numbers, the county's low vaccine rates concern him the most. Again, a lot of people who, uh, who don't have protection against uh, the virus and, and specifically the, the Delta strain uh, are now in, in a situation where they're ex potentially exposed more and uh, can transmit that a lot easier. Just 35% of Sioux County residents are vaccinated, and again, Nelson says he's worried about those low rates, especially among kids ages 12 to 15, as the school year is officially underway. Nebraska hospitals are facing a rise in patients amid a staffing shortage, too. Governor Pete Ricketts today speculated that patients seeking hospitalization now had their care delayed last year, as hospitals were focused solely on COVID-19. Well, certainly the non-COVID hospitalizations are what's driving a lot of this with regard to the staffing emergency. That, again, we're up 40% from where we were, say, in November of last year with regard to non-COVID hospitalizations. And so we got, that, that's, what, that's the 800 more that's people in the hospital. That's non-COVID that's driving us. And to deal with that issue, Nebraska is partnering up with Nomi Health to establish a transfer center for all Nebraska hospitals. A 23-year-old tonight teacher is facing charges in Clay County involving a student who was 15 years old at the beginning of the allegations. A warrant now for arrest was filed for Jackson Picardo Castillo, officially August 19th. He did make his first appearance in court on August 31st. He stands accused of sexual exploitation of a minor, stalking and providing alcohol for a minor, along with solicitation of a minor and other charges. Now, court documents list Picardo Castillo as a teacher at the Vermilion High School at the time of these alleged crimes, which range between November of 2020 and May of 2021. And Norfolk police tonight are investigating a convenience store robbery. Officials say that happened at about 3.45 in the morning. That's when a man walked into the Speedy Mart on Omaha Avenue displaying a handgun and demanding money from the clerk. Police say the clerk complied and the suspect left. No injuries reported in the incident, but detectives are currently following up on any leads. So if you do have information, you're asked to immediately call Norfolk PD. That number is right there on your screen, 402-644-8700. Well, today, a World War II veteran had the opportunity to go on the ride of his life. 97-year-old Carl Swaggerty from Emerson, Nebraska, took a flight in a 1940s Boeing Stearman biplane out of Sioux City Airport. That flight lasted about 15 minutes and flew around the Sergeant Floyd Monument and along the Missouri River. The adventure was all made possible through Dream Flights. That's a nonprofit organization dedicated to honoring seniors and our veterans one flight at a time. You'll hear from Swaggerty and his family with Jason Toktagian. He sat down with the group. That's all coming up tonight at 10. Meanwhile, Pierce County is under a flood warning. The National Weather Service has issued the alert in regards to the North Fork of the Elkhorn River. That's near the city of Pierce. The river is expected to rise above flood stage late this afternoon to a crest of 12.1 feet this evening. 
Widespread lowland flooding will occur. It's expected then to fall below flood stage just after midnight tonight, and the waters are expected to begin receding. Now, the north side of Pierce already has ditches full and cresting with some roads closed now because of water coming across them. Officials add that one thing people can do to make sure that their sump pumps are plugged in and are in working order today. The burn ban in Yankton County will be lifted tomorrow. That's September 2nd. Fire chiefs made the decision following recent rainfall. Now, people who do burn are asked to stay by that fire until it's completely out, as conditions can change quickly with wind and heat in our forecast. So speaking of the forecast, it's time to get an accurate look at the weather. Chief Meteorologist Scott Larson standing by. And Scott, you mentioned today is officially meteorological, the beginning of fall, correct? And it kind of felt like it. That's right. It certainly felt nice out there today, Sophie. A picture-perfect day with mostly sunny skies and temperatures rising into the mid and upper 70s for most. 77 in Sioux City, 79 in Tacoma. A little bit hotter in Omaha, Nebraska today, achieving a high of 81 there. 78 in Yankton, South Dakota. Temperatures tonight should be falling back into the 50s and 60s as we see some more cloud cover begin to move in from the west. And we'll also have some showers and thunderstorms happen tomorrow, mainly during the afternoon and evening hours. Some of those could be severe. We have a marginal risk from the National Weather Service. We'll talk about the severe weather risk and how much rain will stack up. That's coming up in the 9 on 9 forecast in a few minutes. Sophie. All right, thanks a lot, Scott. Social Security benefits might run out even sooner than expected. An annual report shows the primary trust fund, which bankrolls the program, will be out of money by the year 2033. That's one year earlier than previously expected. Now, once that fund does run out, officials say that tax revenue will be only covering about 76% of scheduled benefits. And Walmart and Target are both offering increased minimum wages tonight, and they're not alone. Walgreens has become the latest in a line of big retailers to boost its minimum pay to $15 an hour. The pharmacy chain says the increase will apply to both full and part-time workers. It'll gradually be phased in at all Walgreens store beginning in October of this year. Well, families across Siouxland will soon have a new camp to call their own. Today, the Salvation Army broke ground at the Western Plains Camp in South Sioux City. The large-scale project will consist of a new lodge, common area, long lodge with bathrooms, and also upgraded nurses' stations, along with canoes and kayaks. Sleeping capacity in the cabins and lodges will allow for roughly 350 people at a time. Infrastructure like gas and electricity will also be added to these campsites. A division leader with the Salvation Army says the new additions will help better serve hundreds of area youth who attend summer camp programs every year. We've just had such a warm reception that today is just one more step in our journey um, of people in the Siouxland area supporting us and just really giving us um, encouragement and uh, partnering with us in this whole new venture. Major Leanne Thompson says the Salvation Army has specific money reserved for capital projects like this one, which has been invested or given by the public. The approximate cost for phase one is $10 million. Well, Boys and Girls Home and Family Services cut their ribbon today on a new family services building right on Indian Hills Drive in Sioux City. The facility is just the beginning of a free three phase project to turn the entire shopping center into a campus. The renovation of some other spaces has already begun, and they say it's already helping them to better serve their community. The parking, they're still with their therapist. Um, we've improved the services inside, and they feel it's more quiet, more peaceful, a better place to conduct this type of business. The group hopes to be fully moved into their new campus finished in 2023. Ohio police foiled a carjacking incident with a little unexpected help. We'll tell you what piece of technology led to the recovery of one man's car coming up in about 10 minutes. And it's been a beautiful start to the month of September today, but tomorrow we're going to bring back some showers and storms to the forecast. Pretty nice weather over the course of the Labor Day weekend, and we'll talk about high temperatures in the 70s and 80s. That's all next in the 9 on 9 forecast. You're watching KCAU 9 News with Sophie Erber and Chief Meteorologist Scott Larson. This is KCAU 9 News at 5. 
coming into the season, something we really haven't had uh, this calendar year yet in no. Siouxland, and uh, the temperatures dropped off nicely for the first day of fall. Yeah, pretty nice out there today, Sophie. It looks like we'll be able to sustain a pattern of 70s and 80s for high temperatures, so a lot to look forward to here as we kick off the month of September. Getting a live look outside from the North Star Community Credit Union camera in Cherokee, Iowa. It displays mostly sunny skies, and again, it's just been a gorgeous day with temperatures able to rise into the upper 70s and lower 80s. That was the case in Sioux City for this afternoon as we were able to hit a high of 77. The normal high temperature today is 80. The low temperature was 57 degrees earlier on this morning. Here's a look at temperatures as they currently stand in the middle to upper 70s. It is 76 outside in Cherokee, 78 for Yankton, South Dakota, and North Fork, Nebraska. A temperature of 77. Temperatures looking to be a little bit cooler in the middle to upper 70s, getting back to 83 next Friday. Here's a beautiful picture that was taken from Storm Lake, Iowa in Buena Vista County. The moon shining bright there over the lighthouse in Kings Point Resort. Thank you very much to our viewer for snapping that picture and sending it in. If you have one of your own, make sure to go to SiouxLandProud.com, find the weather tab, and send us your unique photo. Of course, we had some rain and thunderstorms uh, the other night, and it looks like some more will be happening tomorrow, so some of those active weather pictures would certainly be welcome. Absolutely, especially with such calm ones peppered in between. Right? That's right. Thanks a lot, Scott. Well, public transportation, not always the most friendly option, especially in New York. We're taking a look at one man's mission to create better conversations coming up in about seven minutes. But first, robbed at gunpoint. One man didn't know if he'd ever see his car, phone, or watch again. We'll explain how the thief's greed was their own downfall. Next. Police in Ohio were able to track down carjackers because of an item the suspect stole. Peggy Gallick explains what exactly took place. 911, what's the location of your emergency? I uh, just got robbed at gunpoint. Well, this victim called 911 after he was carjacked Monday night around 9.30 on East 218th Street in Euclid. I pulled into my friend's driveway. They literally walked up to me at gunpoint. I uh, my car keys, both my phones, my wallet, my Apple Watch. Be careful what you're, um, what you're stealing because it uh, may ultimately lead to your arrest. Police say the victim's Apple Watch, which is similar to this one, helped lead officers to the suspects, who were found about four hours later in Cleveland. Don't Don't move. They were immediately on it and were immediately um, trying to ascertain the, the movements of this stolen vehicle and the suspects. Yeah, uh, a lot of our officers are technologically savvy guys and gals, and uh, they realized that if any of those uh, uh, technologies, the iPhone or the Apple Watch, were turned on, that they could track it, and that's exactly what they did. The officers were also able to recover all of the victim's property, including his car and electronic devices. I am so incredibly proud of our officers. They did a phenomenal job, as they usually do. A real increase in any violent gun-related crimes. Loaded. And police also confiscated two loaded handguns that the suspects had on them. One suspect is 19 years old and the other is 15 years old. Police tell us both suspects remain in custody and are due in court soon to face several charges. Police are thankful no one was injured. The officers, you know, they're tenacious. They're, they want to put the bad guys away. I want to send a message out to, to those who, um, you, know, uh, you know, commit these carjackings and these violent crimes. You know, we're, we're going we're gonna to look for you and we're going to make every attempt and every effort to arrest you and hold you accountable. The victim, who was a drummer, had musical equipment in the vehicle too when it was stolen. Police were able to get that back for him as well. Good news there. Well, News Nation Prime comes your way every night at 7, of course, on News Nation. Here's a preview. Tonight, a News Nation exclusive, an American stranded in Afghanistan, a woman who says she feels abandoned by her country and scared for her life, her family working tirelessly to get their mother home. I said, you have failed our family. We are U.S. citizens. We were born and raised here. We are Americans. That's all we know. And you have failed us. What are her options to get out safely and why she was there in the first place? An incredible story you'll only see tonight on News Nation Prime. You could see some of the channels listed here for News Nation, or if you're interested, just be sure to check your local guide. New Yorkers waiting for the subway are getting a new sight to see. It's a man offering to take them on a date while they wait. How he's made it a TV show concept next. Every mother teaches their children, tells them not to talk to strangers, right? But one man who has tossed that advice out the window is finding pure gold in his chat with perfect strangers in New York City, no less, and on the subway. Here's ABC's Will Gans with his story. 
the New York City subway system isn't necessarily known for its friendliness. But Thomas Knox is on a mission to change that. A light bulb went over my head and I was like, what can I do to connect people? You know, we're so disconnected when we're traveling. Thomas coming up with date while you wait. Two chairs, a table, I uh, have a flower uh, in a bottle. I think it's a nice touch. And then I usually bring a board game with me. Some people sitting for just a few quick minutes as they wait for their train. And then as it started to get more popular, people would sit with me for 20, 30 minutes playing Connect Four with me, telling me their life stories. Despite the name, Date While You Wait isn't about finding love. Thomas says it's about connecting with our fellow human beings. Who are the people that stand out in your mind? Meeting the inventor of Connect Four, Howard Wexler was was a highlight for me. Other subway strangers, grateful just to be seen and be heard. I met with a, uh, an educator who had to stop teaching because she was diagnosed with an illness that, uh, that caused her to be in pain. Um, and she said sitting down with me in the subway was the first time she hasn't felt pain since she was diagnosed. Um, so that was something that really warmed my heart. Now, Date While You Wait has been ordered to series on a local channel in New York City. That heartwarming message front and center, even in the subway station. We all have something in common, no matter who we are, no matter where we're from. And if you can find that commonality, and, and that's kind of my goal when I'm having these conversations, then you can, you can talk, you can, you can uh, engage better. Well, Thomas's Date While You Wait series has already been nominated for a New York Emmy Award. That show premieres on October 13th. We take a live look outside right now. Scott returns just after this break with one more check on your forecast. Stay with us. Before we wrap up here at 5, let's check in first with Tim for what's coming up at 6. Hi, Tim. Hey, good afternoon, Sophie. Coming up at 6, details on an afternoon rollover on the city's north side. We had a crew at the scene. We'll have the details of that accident coming up in just a half an hour. Elsewhere, a 97-year-old Siouxland World War II veteran takes a dream flight today aboard a Boeing Stearman biplane. We'll check out Cal Swaggerty's mission and what he had to say after crossing the Siouxland skies coming up today at 6. Also, September is Hunger Action Month, and our parent company, Nexstar Media Group, along with Feeding America, are working hard all month to end food insecurity. Find out how you can help out in that effort coming up after World News Tonight. That's when Jake and I will join you folks in studio. All right, thanks so much. We'll see you then, Tim, and uh, really a beautiful night to get outside if you can. Yeah, great night out there, Sophie. It looks like our temperature should be falling back to 63 degrees as some clouds begin to roll in. Tomorrow, a couple of spotty showers during the morning and a better opportunity at seeing some more widespread thunderstorms through the afternoon. A couple of those may be severe and will pick up an additional half inch to an inch and a half of rain. A couple additional showers possible on Friday. Temperatures should be in the 70s and 80s as we go into the Labor Day holiday weekend. All right, couldn't ask for more. Thanks a lot, Scott. Thank you for joining us. We'll all see you here tonight again at 6 with Tim and Jake. Until then, have a great night, everyone.